Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and in this video, we're gonna do a sort of responsive design crash course for folks that are new to Oxygen or new to responsive design in general. Now, responsive design, most people are somewhat familiar with. It just means that our website adapts to the viewport width. So depending on which device users are using to visit the website, the website should adapt and lay out appropriately to make sure the experience is good for the users. Now, Oxygen makes this incredibly easy to do, and it's actually one of the first things that drew me to Oxygen as a user back in 2016, 2017, when I started using it. We'll get into some of those tools, but first I wanna show you what the problem is with a site that's been built maybe without considering too much how the design will flow down to smaller viewport widths. Now, one of the first ways to check for responsive problems on a site is to go to the front end of the site in Chrome, open up DevTools, you can just right click, click Inspect, and that'll bring DevTools up at the bottom, and then click this little Toggle Device Toolbar button. And when you click it, it'll give you this frame around the viewport that allows you to resize. Now this is usually my first stop for trying to identify responsive problems on a site, but it's definitely not the only thing to do. But let's start here and go down and just see what kind of issues we have as this site gets smaller. So I'm seeing this image kind of squishes in from the left and right and becomes uh, skewed a little bit. We don't want that. Um, as we go down, we're gonna see that this heading is probably way too large on a smaller viewport, yeah. And I usually will jump to the smallest viewport reasonable, which is somewhere between 320 pixels and 400 pixels, and look for issues there to see kind of what the worst case scenario is and see this image is kind of getting squished. And if we go down, this obviously isn't right. And if you look, we have a scroll bar so this is going to provide you a quick look at issues you have with your layout on smaller viewport widths. Now, one thing I found is pretty important to identify the most issues possible is to actually use the responsive dropdown up here to choose a device as well. So in this case, we can choose like iPhone 5 slash SE and see we see a bit of a different issue here. Even though it's still caused by the same thing, we have this white gap instead of a scroll bar. So by using the device previews, you're gonna get a better look. Again, this is the first stop. If you really wanna know what issues are gonna be present on mobile devices, it's important first to test on an actual mobile device. I used to keep an iPhone that was one of the really small older ones because if things looked good on that, then I knew they looked good on newer devices. But if you don't have a physical device to use to test, you can use something like Browser Stack or Lambda Test. Both offer the ability to preview websites on real devices. So here we can choose Android, iOS, Windows, Mac, We'll go to iOS, we'll choose the iPhone 12 Pro, and we'll choose the Safari browser. So this is gonna tell us what the website actually looks like on Safari on iOS, which is super important because sometimes the mobile versions of the browsers are gonna have different issues than the browsers will on a desktop operating system, even if you size the viewport down. So. I'm just gonna paste in this tunnel link so that we can see. And here we see a very similar issue to what we saw when we previewed with the specific device in Chrome's dev tools. So you can see that that's, that's a very helpful kind of first stop to see what kind of issues you're gonna run into. So since we have similar issues on the Chrome DevTools preview, we're gonna get rid of Browser Stack for now. But again, I do recommend using a service like Browser Stack or Lambda Test in order to preview across multiple real world devices because those aren't just emulators, they're actually firing up real devices and showing you what you would see if you were using that device. So we'll go back here to Chrome DevTools and just scale down and we'll start fixing these problems. Now that we know how to see the issues, the next step is how do we solve them? So let's go into Oxygen and get started. Now it's important to understand in Oxygen how responsive design works. The main tool you have at your disposal in Oxygen is the viewport 
drop down over here on the left side in the properties pane. This allows you to view your design at the breakpoints that are available in Oxygen. And the important part to remember is that when you have a breakpoint selected, let's say I choose less than 992 pixels and I have this section selected and I make a change in the properties pane, we'll just make it this terrible red color, that actually has been saved in the CSS in a media query that means that red background color only appears at less than 992 pixels. And we can see this if we go back up to all devices, it's white again. Let's save and go up to the front end. And as we change our viewport, let's see here, that was 990, less than 992 pixels. So as we go down, we're gonna see that change kick in at that breakpoint that we had selected. So we're at 992, and of course the breakpoint was less than 992, which means it kicks in at 991 pixels. Let's go down by one pixel, and you can see now that the background is red. So that is a fundamental aspect of designing responsively in Oxygen. And as long as you remember that, it's very, very easy to make the changes that are needed in your design. So to clear out a change that you've made on a breakpoint, you can just go ahead and click the X button on that breakpoint and that'll clear it out. Now let's go back to all devices and let's just get started with some global changes that will make responsive styling a lot easier. So one of the main things we can do to make our lives easier as we're designing responsively is we can go into manage, settings, global styles, and we can make adjustments to our body text and heading font sizes. So as you can see here, we have the H1 set to 96 pixels. And if you look on the front end, as we narrow the viewport down, that H1 is way too big. Now there are a couple of ways to address this. One is to use a special CSS function called clamp, which we can do by clicking the little pixel icon, clicking none, and then we can type our clamp function in. So it'd be something like clamp. And then we can set like a minimum value. So like 22 pixels, that's the smallest we ever want it to be. A scaling value, so something like nine viewport width. And then a maximum value, which would be uh, 96 pixels. So now you can see that we have our heading back to a pretty big size. But if we save that in preview on the front end, you'll see that it scales with our viewport. Now clamp is super cool and it has a lot of great features in that you can set a minimum and a maximum size. So I really like it for that, but there are always considerations and always multiple ways to do these things when you're looking at CSS. And one of the other ways that I've found that I like to handle my headings is by using rem values. So rem is a value based on the font size of the HTML element. And all you really need to know is that that font size by default is 16 pixels. So one rem will equal 16 pixels unless you've changed the font size of the HTML element and then it'll equal whatever the font size is that you've set. So if we do something like one rem, so we'll click our little unit icon and choose rem instead this time, we now have a 16 pixel heading but we want it to be a bunch bigger and previously it was 96 pixels. So we wanna find a rem value that's close to that. So we'll do six rem, which will get us back up to about the size that we had. And then similarly, we'll go down here and do four rem for the H2s. And of course we, we still have pixels selected. So make sure that you click that pixel icon and choose rem. And then that actually is a little bit bigger than we probably want. So we'll try something like 3.75. And then down here, this is gonna be something like uh, two rem and so on and so forth. And we can switch all of the headings to use rem values, but since we're only using H1 through H3 on this page, we won't do all of those. Now, the nice thing about rem is because it's based on the font size of the HTML element, and because Oxygen makes it so easy to adjust element properties at specific breakpoints, we can easily cause these headings to scale down as the viewport narrows in size. So what we need to do is we need to go to Manage, Selectors, and we're gonna add an HTML selector. This will allow us to set the font size on this element. 
So it's 16 pixels by default, and we don't wanna change that. We like that for all devices. But let's say down at 992 pixels, we wanna drop the size of all our headings a little bit. We can go to Advanced, Typography, and we can change the font size. If we put it at 16, everything's gonna stay the same. But if we drop it down to something like 12, we will see on the front end that our headings will adapt. So again, we're at the less than 992 pixel breakpoint. So if we go down to 992 on the width and then just go down one more pixel, you'll see all of our headings suddenly change and we didn't have to make adjustments for each individual heading. That's really the beauty of REM is we can change one value and that's the font size of the HTML element and all the properties that use REM, not just font sizes, will adapt since they're just a multiplier for the HTML font size. So that looks pretty good, but we might wanna go one step further and go down to our smallest breakpoint and set our HTML font size to something like 10 pixels. Now let's save that and go to the front end and we'll just look at what that looks like when we get down to that breakpoint. So let's go on down and almost there. And there's the change. So let's go back up so we can see the change occur. And that looks pretty good. And then of course, we always wanna test at a fairly small width. So that looks pretty good. But another thing we can use REM on is the spacings in our sections. You see, we have a bit of excessive white space here. And that's because while that amount of space on a desktop device looks pretty good, on a narrower viewport width, that vertical space can seem like a bit too much. So we can go over here and adjust our section spacing as well. And we don't need to make any more changes to our HTML element unless we aren't happy with the sizes we're getting out of our REM units. But I think what we have is good for now. So we're gonna go back to manage settings and go back into global styles. And we're going to sections and columns. And we're gonna change these values to use REM as well. Now this is gonna look really crazy at first when we swap it out because we're at 75 REM, which is just a ton. Instead, we wanna use four REM. And then on the left and right side, we can use something like two REM. So let's just make that adjustment here, four on the bottom. And then we can do the same thing with columns. So we're gonna do REM for the columns and we'll do one REM on all sides for column padding. You can see things jumping around. That's just because we have a high pixel value in there. Uh, that is kind of a crazy amount of REMs to use. So it looks a little crazy until we switch it to the appropriate value. So now if we look on the front end, our white space should make a little bit more sense for our mobile device. So as you can see, we don't have as much of a gap above and below our sections. So my recommendation is to either, if you're more advanced with CSS, then use Clamp. Uh, of course, you need to research the trade-offs because with any method you choose to use, there can be ramifications as far as accessibility and other things. So really make sure that Clamp fits your needs and doesn't have any negative trade-offs that you personally are concerned about. But for me, the simplest way to make sure things scale is to use REM. And by using REM from the very beginning and setting up your global styles using REM, you're gonna have a much easier time scaling everything down to narrower viewports. And one final adjustment I do wanna make here is to the body text, which is 16 pixels by default. We're gonna switch that to one REM so that it also scales. Now this can present a bit of a problem with REM because with REM, there's no way to set a minimum font size. Unlike with Clamp, where we can tell it only go down to say 16 or 22 pixels or 14 or whatever that may be, REM is just a multiplier of the HTML font size. So our body text now is gonna be 10 pixels on mobile devices, which is just way too small. So what I like to do here in this case is to create a class that kind of sets our text to a higher REM value at a certain breakpoint. So if we look up here, it's probably fine. It's fine here, it's fine on desktops. It gets a little small at the 992 or 991 
uh, pixel breakpoint. So maybe that's where we make our adjustment. So if we look here at our text element, we're gonna add something like, we'll just call it font size minimum. And then all we need to do really is select our 992 pixel, less than 992 pixel breakpoint and change our font size rem value to something a bit higher like two. So that may be a bit much, but let's just look a little bit. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. It's gonna get a little bit bigger, which I personally don't mind slightly larger body font sizes on mobile devices since the screens are a bit smaller, makes it easier to read. Um, and that does look pretty good as it scales down, but I think it's a bit big here between our smallest breakpoint and our less than 992 pixel breakpoint. So I think two is a bit much. Let's try 1.5. That looks quite a bit better. And then we'll choose our less than 480 breakpoint, and there we'll go to two, which means it'll be 20 pixels. So this looks much better. We go down, it gets a little bit bigger, and then on mobile devices, it maintains a really good size. So that looks pretty good. And I think that's all the things that we want to tweak with REM, but what we do wanna do is we want to add this class to all of our uh, text elements. So font size minimum there and font size minimum there. Now, if you're good with CSS, a more efficient way to do this would be to add a style sheet with some settings that adjust the font size as the viewport narrows using media queries. And we can take a look, quick look at that because I do think that that's probably a bit more efficient if you have a very big or complicated site. So instead of our class, we can then go into manage style sheets add a style sheet and we'll call this body font size. And we can do some rules. So media max width 991 pixels. So we're essentially gonna do the same thing we did with the class, but we're just doing it in CSS instead. Let's switch the editor theme. So this is a bit more visible and we're gonna do body P. And that means we're gonna affect any paragraph elements within the body. And we're gonna do font size 1.5 rem. And then we need one more media query, media max width 479 pixels, body P, font size 2 rem. Now we can actually take that class away, even though we just went through and added it, we can take this away and see what the result is on the front end. So I've removed the class that we just added to all of these text elements. And again, if you're doing a really simple like landing page, the class is fine and it's easy to add, but the style sheet is gonna actually take care of this scaling problem on a more universal level. So it should also adjust the font sizes of text from the WordPress editor, for instance, which will be really handy. So let's refresh and let's inspect to see responsively what's happening. And we should see that our font size is now going to adjust as we get smaller and not get too little. So it does literally the same exact thing that the class we created did, but it does it on a more universal level, which is just much more efficient. You can see the class isn't there. And if we look at computed, our font size is now coming from that special CSS rule, those media queries that we just set up in the style sheet. So if you have a blog or something and you're using the REM approach for body font size, this would be the way I recommend to make the adjustments as the viewport scales down. So finally, moving on from REM, let's take a look at some of the other issues that we have on the page and how to fix them. So our font sizes are now adjusting properly. And if it were me, I would probably tweak the bottom padding on this top section. So let's just jump in and do that. So here it's a bit close. Um, let's say at less than 768, we wanna add some more padding on the bottom of this section. So we can click and drag the padding or we can go to advanced size and spacing and just adjust the padding up a bit. So we could go to something like six rem. And that's gonna give us a little more breathing room below that heading on mobile devices. The adjustment's pretty subtle, but it does make a difference. If we want more, we can of course, change that to something like eight rim and just keep tweaking it until it looks right. And you'll notice that that change 
does not impact our desktop site. Again, Oxygen saves those responsive changes to specific media queries so that it only affects that device width and below. So that looks pretty good. Now let's go up and take a look at what else we might want to adjust. So here we have these images that have a couple of problems. First, I'd like this image to be above my text content and it's not. So how do we fix that? So first, we wanna see when it's dropping below the text content. It looks like it's at the less than 992 pixel breakpoint, so that's where we need to kick in our changes, but we also have another problem with this image. It's not scaling properly. You can see it's kind of getting squished and it doesn't look right when the viewport narrows. That's a common issue caused by setting explicit dimensions on images. That's something you generally want to avoid. Besides setting a width, you almost never want to set a height on an image. So if I were to guess, that's probably what's happened here. So let's go back up to all devices. This is one of those changes that we can make on all devices, and then we don't have to make adjustments on smaller viewport widths because we're just using wise choices from the beginning. Here you can see this image has a height set. So let's just clear the height because the image is gonna go ahead and scale appropriately and maintain that aspect ratio as long as we haven't set the height explicitly. So let's refresh here and instantly that is better. It's now gonna scale much, much better and it will never get squished. But we have an issue with the image down here as well. So we'll need to make an adjustment there. So let's scroll down to this image and same problem there, it had a height set in pixel values. So save that and jump up to the front end and scroll on down, and now this one looks much better too. So we just fixed those images. Now we need to fix the problem we have where this image is below our text content, and we don't want it down there. We want it at the top, just like it is for this second section down there. So how do we fix that? Luckily, Oxygen's columns element makes this super easy, and this is in fact in a columns element. So we're gonna select the columns element itself. It's set to stack the columns vertically at less than 992 pixels, which is fine, that's what we want. But we also want it to reverse the column order at less than 992 pixels. So let's save that and jump up to the front end and refresh. And you'll see immediately we have the layout we want. So we're getting much, much closer on this layout. We've solved a lot of problems already, but we still have kind of a major one, and that is this situation here. This little interstitial information section has shot right out of the bounds of our viewport and is causing problems. So how do we fix this? If we go back to responsive, we can see that we have this scroll bar. How do we fix this problem? A lot of times this will manifest as your site looking like this with a white gap, which we saw earlier. So if you see this white gap, a lot of times you'll see the element that's overflowing and you can fix it. But if you're not sure which element is overflowing, there's an easy trick to figure that out. So we can go into Chrome DevTools and we're gonna click this little plus icon on the styles pane. And this creates a new style rule. And we're gonna create a style rule with body and star, which means it's gonna select everything within the body. Then we want to add a border, one pixel, solid red to everything. Now you can see the boundaries of all of the elements and you can kind of scroll down on this white gap and assuming this element, let's say it had a white background for some reason, it might be hard to see that that was the overflowing element, but with the border, it's easy to see that it's the one causing the problem. So now that we know that's the problem child here, we can go back into Oxygen and correct the issue. 99% of the time when you have a white gap or an overflow issue where it's causing a horizontal scroll bar, it's because a width has been set on an element in pixels rather than like a percentage or something that would scale. So since we know this is the element that has a problem, we can click it and immediately we can see the width is set to 768 pixels. Now the problem is we want this thing to be 768 pixels. So how do we achieve that without the scroll bar or the white gap? Well, we can do a little bit more finesse over here under advanced size and spacing. What we wanna do is set a max width of 768 pixels 
and then set the width to a scaling value like 100%. You can see it looks identical, but what's gonna happen is if we go to the front end, let's make this big again so that we can scale down for maximum effect, refresh, let's fix our zoom here, and then as we scale down, that div is going to be 768 pixels wide until the viewport makes it so it can't be anymore. And then the div scales. So now you can see we no longer have a horizontal scroll bar or a white gap problem. So the key point here is just avoid using static pixel values for element widths and you will likely never run into the overflow problem that we just saw. So now let's move on and see what other issues our page has. Looks like the final problem is this gallery here. This is an oxygen gallery element, but the oxygen gallery element isn't super responsive with the default layout that it has when you first insert it. Luckily, oxygen has CSS grid now, so that's super easy to fix. So let's jump into the Oxygen Visual Editor and let's select our gallery element. And what we're gonna do is go to Layout and choose Grid. We're gonna choose Set Image Fit to Cover so everything's about the same size. And now instead of setting a column count, we're gonna set Auto Fit Columns. This is gonna allow our grid cells to intelligently collapse down to the next row when the viewport width is too narrow to accommodate that cell on the row it was in previously. So we can adjust how many images are shown per row by adjusting the minimum width value. And as we scale this up or down, we're gonna see at some point it kind of kicks in and makes a change. But for this, we actually like the three column layout. So with just a couple of clicks, we can go back to the front end and see what the effect is. So as we scale the viewport down, instead of getting really, really tiny, it's actually going to adapt to the viewport width. And as it goes down again, it's gonna jump over to a full width layout. So with CSS Grid, it makes it super easy to use auto fit columns and this min width value to make your gallery responsive without a whole lot of work. So let's just refresh this page and we'll just scroll through again to see what it looks like now. Before we had a way too big heading that's been solved. Our spacing up here on this top section is much better. Our images are no longer getting squished. Our headings are all scaling. Our body text is scaling. This interstitial information section is no longer causing overflow. The same image fix for this image to keep it from getting squished. And then our gallery is adapting dynamically as the viewport scales down. So this is obviously a fairly simple example, but it gives me an opportunity to show you most of the tools that are available for you to use to design your Oxygen sites responsively. And if you are able to master the way that Oxygen uses its breakpoints and master units like RIM and master things like Clamp eventually if you wanna delve into that, then designing responsive sites in Oxygen is incredibly trivial, especially if you lay the groundwork early in the global styles and settings. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that is a responsive design crash course for Oxygen. Thank you very much for watching.